Vietnam, you are ready. Because that many target bans from Vietnam should have been punished by Indonesia picking up characters like Max and Xenial, but instead they opted on the Indonesia side just to play to their strengths, instantly gave Ahmed a more powerful mage, and I don't think that's a problem unless it is. If that works, it makes sense. I'm on board. If it doesn't work, then I have to start questioning why didn't you pick the better characters? Well, that's the bonus of, you know, playing in a series like this. It isn't just one game to decide it. You have three. Sure. You gotta win two, so maybe experimenting early against a, you know, opponent that might not give them as much trouble on the side of Vietnam. You know, they're able to have that first pick. They want to try some new stuff out. Maybe you'd be better off trying to save that for a more aggressive opponent like Chinese Taipei Wildcard. Instead, you know, they want to try out something newer immediately. This is by far the closest match either of these teams are going to get. True. So if you are going to say, well, how good is our baseline? If we just build to our baseline, where is that high watermark? This isn't a bad time to try. Now, looking at this, TJ, what is the plan for these two teams early on? Let's start off with Vietnam. I want to see Vietnam playing very, very aggressive. This is out of their wheelhouse. Normally, they are the more safe team. But if you're Vietnam and you can change that up, if you are Vietnam and you can push into the enemy jungle, gain map control, gain awareness, that changes things and possibly secures the result. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead, load on to the battlegrounds for game one between Vietnam and Indonesia. We'll see who's able to strike first blood and try and take one, game one of the series. I can't wait. Already Indonesia pressing very wow. far forward. All right. We um, said they were going to be very aggressive, perhaps over-aggressive. I sure hope this isn't the start of that, but I do like it. You guys already see there Blake getting chunked out. It's going to be a trade, as always, of the Michaels. Both teams running it straight down mid, something we see a lot from the Eastern teams. And Hans, all right, stealing away the jungle before Indonesia could, uh, before Vietnam could uh, walk away with it. Very, very cool little mechanics on the lasso. Might not make much of a difference. He says, but come on over here and takes the goal for himself. He's happy. That's crack. Oh, true, true. But I, the point is, the fact that you're able to get even a tiny amount of gold there disrupts the mindset. Maybe that makes a difference. Well, you gotta be a little bit careful, though, if you go down a little bit early. That's not the plan, as uh, Yamate was looking to pressure. But plan here, though, is are we going to see Abyssal Dragon control? Or are we going to be seeing jungle control coming out from either of these the gold teams? Gold matters a lot, because Blake on the Crixie is going to have to build basically full damage in order to find value. And that's why the team is such a good combo with it, because that Resurrect helps the Glass Cannon stay alive. This means that either the, we need to see a very early gold lead oh, from well. Vietnam so they can build that out ahead, or they need to control Ooh. the game from the beginning. That was the knockup they needed. A three-man knockup coming on out there to keep Polo alive as he was looking to scout on into that mid lane rush. I like that, though, from Indonesia as they were able to set up a trap, bait it in Vietnam, and they pick up a Spirit Sentinel. And you can see the instant response there. I love it. They're going directly on the Vietnam side. They're coming the right on dragon. back, though. They're going to try and contest this, TJ. Abyssal oh Dragon my good God. against Steel, stolen away from Indonesia That's as they pick up first blood on Polo. That should not have happened, but he just walks right in, spends the death from above. Maybe the punish comes through as well. It honestly doesn't matter. Either one probably would have secured the dragon, and that is massive for Indonesia. Pick up an 1,100 gold lead at two and a half minutes. We said, hey, play aggressive. And you might find success. And for Vietnam, their plan was, you know, we have to play early if we want to find anything. And you can see, we talked about this. Vietnam have a bad tendency of playing too defensive if they feel like they're getting behind. And I fear we're already seeing a bit of it. Every single player is on their side of the map, playing very careful, playing very safe. And that's going to seriously hamper their farming efforts. Well, let's go ahead and take another look at that dragon fight where Indonesia was able to strike first blood. This is so nice. It's just perfect timing. Where it comes down, sees the dragon with just about the right amount of HP, and they're instantly able to pick up Polo as well, who is so crucial. If you can base out his ultimate aura, I believe in that fight it wasn't up yet, it's going to be much easier to do. DJ, they both have the exact same idea. Indonesia, they're going to be running straight Beautiful. into the death rush. Hura glows the jump in directly onto TF and tries to assassinate the pilot as he picks up yet another kill for his team. Polo underneath the tower, feeling a little bit low. Yamate has to be back and away as the Thunderbird connected, and Ahmed will also secure a kill. Hura just He's survives so underneath. Polo gets dived. Are you serious, Indonesia, Vietnam? What is going on? 
Hans just lives there. There is a trade. That tower will fall, but Vietnam has just suffered a major defeat in the midline. This TJ, I said play aggressive, but this is them trying to slaughter people underneath towers before four minutes. But it works. If you're able to shut down TF like that, the violet, the key target, that is massive. If you could seriously slow down the gold farming of either the violet or the Crixie, this is going to be a toothless Vietnam roster in the second half. Already sitting at 1,400 gold. They get the position onto the Spirit Sentinel. You can even see them slowly starting to rotate toward that mid lane. You got Yamate jumping on in. I wasn't able to tell, but you can see Hans has to be careful. He's running for his life. Blake also coming up the river, but meanwhile, the Abyssal Dragon was taken for Indonesia. They'll trade away Caraway for the Dragon. I think that's worth it. Caraway is currently playing the support and that means that he can die. It's fine. The majority of his value will come from CC, stuns, stuff like that, so it doesn't really matter if he dies, as long as he has his cooldowns and his build is reasonably close. But meanwhile, here's something for you, TJ. You already took two towers on the side of Vietnam. That opens up the map for them. It gives them a little bit of control into these jungles. The mid lane still stands. Oh, this is good. Yamate wants to go on in. Hans still staying alive for not too much longer, though. How is he still going? What is going on? They haven't finished off Hans. Polo dived underneath the tower. Vietnam, the communication, it's just not there, TJ. When I said I wanted to see Vietnam go aggressive, I didn't think they should just set up cap, start a cap fire, start roasting some marshmallows behind two towers. I am, I'm confused. This just seems so out of the ordinary. Is this Vietnam making mistakes or is it Indonesia like playing aggressive? I don't know. I, I don't know either. Here's the replay. So the res comes through. Gamate is saved by Polo, but then he like recommits. Hans baits underneath the tower, keeps everyone alive, and the flanks here in Indonesia communicating well and punishing a mistake excellently. And those are mistakes he can't be making at the World Cup. The rest of the team rotating down toward the River Abyssal, going to be joining us in about 30 seconds. Looks like Indonesia want to try and get priority, pick up the third one of the game, and keep accelerating this gold lead. And they have complete control of the area right now this is such good control from indonesia and this is one of the things they do do well they understand the importance of the objectives if they win this fight here they get the dragon for i free. swear i've seen this before tj but indonesia they're getting knocked Yamate. around the hissy fit is actually perfect onto multiple members oh. but they just dive underneath the tower and take down the teammate why force goes in with the shock the malik ultimate instantly shutting down that fight finds a knock up and a cleave combo this abyssal dragon's up and there are not enough vietnam members on the map to contest it at least not properly well indonesia gonna slowly start it up as they re-aggro and without that teamy it's very dangerous to try and go for a fight like this this is gonna be the third one of the game so what's interesting is vietnam totally could challenge this because indonesia are playing actually with two of their players completely split from this fight but vietnam don't know this because they're not maintaining vision around the map and this is something we were talking about the, the map awareness they, they need to improve on know where the players are. If they have players up top poking around the Spirit Sentinel, they know where the players are split. If they have players down bottom, they know who's taking Dragon. They didn't know either, and as a result, they were just playing passive and careful, and their gold lead is now suffering. Well, it's something we've seen in those mid lane fights. They always start with four members in the brush, just trying to hide from the enemy team. Blake gets taken down quite low by that Thunderbird. He is going to be able to regen just a little bit, survives underneath the tower, but you can see the pressure onto this mid lane starting to be exerted by Indonesia. They just don't have any minions. The Violet's not doing badly in terms of farm. In fact, he's arguably ahead of his counterpart in the jungle, but it's not enough because that Violet isn't winning the fights. But look at this. This Omen has been left alone to farm up TJ, and he's allowed him to bring three members of Indonesia up uh, toward the top side. Is Vietnam going to make a play in mid? Indonesia seems to have no interest in chasing that in the top lane because they're worried about the mid lane. That's why this rotate's rotation. coming through, and it could be lethal. Vietnam respect this though and you're gonna go down the river 45 seconds onto the abyssal dragon so if indonesia can find a player here it sets them up beautifully to take the fourth one of the game i'll give it for vietnam because they have been able to secure these towers they have kept the gold relatively close even being down six kills and three abyssal dragons i love this split push from bronze he's been consistently maintaining lane pressure and that's just going to force somebody from indonesia to go up there and deal with it 
Kamal in that mid lane. Ahmed gonna get knocked up. He hits about half his health, but should be able to be just fine as you do see Braun still sticking toward that top lane, trying to draw members away from these objectives. Spirit Sentinel about to respawn. Abyssal gonna be on the table in five seconds. And really, Indonesia don't have the control that their lead should dictate they have. You can see Vietnam is not nearly as far behind in the gold as they frankly should be. It's a little bit of a question here on the side of Indonesia. It's kind of looking like they're playing how we expected Vietnam to play. Playing a little bit too safe. Maybe they changed my mind here, though, with a fight. Wira gets taken down pretty low himself, so he has to back off. Even going for the oh. recall in the bush, a little gutsy. is able to escape with his life, but Indonesia, where's his coronation? It's just feeling like it's slowly starting to fall apart. Vietnam should know they just got an effective kill and try and punish it because that recall coming through means they're a player down on the Indonesia side. It's like they lost a kill. Therefore, this pressure can come through across the map, including this mid and bot lane tower. Well, you saw Bronze 5 was still up toward that top lane and brought multiple members from Indonesia up to try and deal with him. But there's still an Abyssal Dragon on the table. Vietnam have the positioning around this. Instead, are you still... Wow, okay, oh, let's start bold. up a Dark Slayer. They maybe want to try and bring in a fight around this River Blake. Still sitting there, wants to go for it. But Vietnam, they just can't draw Indonesia in enough. And that is a, that's enough to tie up the gold. Vietnam, frankly, again, should have had the vision of that to know it was impossible. Maybe it was a bait play, but they didn't accurately punish it either. Still waiting here, as you can see, we're uh, the shock caught out. The shock is going to come on down. The lasso is able to bring back Yamate. Thunderbird going to find its mark as they're able to pick up the kill. Who else is going to fall? Polo going to get resurrected, is able to flicker over the wall. Abyssal Dragon was aggroed by Vietnam, got to help them out in that scenario. Bronze 5, though, still up in the top lane. And he's still pushing. He could very well get this tower if they're not quick enough on the rotate. They do have the recall back to base from Wira. Look how much damage he does, though, to it. That's a decent amount for only two auto attacks. He's Same. able to bring in he two members now. of Indonesia. He's oh going for a 2v2. This omen is on a rampage. Look at this. More members going up. This is allowing Vietnam to get away with these free backs. Problems. I, how? He just set up camp. He put down his death's embrace and he said, right, I'm going to stay here for a moment and take a 2v1. Is that okay with you? I'm under the tower, but it just, I just live here. His, his name might be Bronze, but he's looking better than the guys in my solo queue saying they're diamond. That was me. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. But let's see. Spirit Sentinel going to be contested here by Vietnam. So they're able to push back Indonesia into their jungle. They've actually taken down these outer tier towers, and this has opened up the map amazingly for them because they can now look to pressure into the jungle. You can see Blake using this Crixie Ultimate Moonfall just as a zoning tool, and this is how Vietnam have gotten back in the game. The fact that they somehow despite being behind for the vast you know, majority of the gold. Yeah, they have so much more map control, and Indonesia is suffering due to their lack of map knowledge. Both these teams should have had more map control than they had at various points. This is going to be a Dark Slayer, and Indonesia don't know about it. I'm loving this from Polo and Blake. They're acting as bait in the jungle. They want to try and distract Indonesia, and that is enough for them to pick up the Dark Slayer. On top of it, they take down the support. The Alice is gone. I don't think the idea of bait is that it kills the fishes. You'll see. Either way, Hans wants to go aggressive. Yamate is going to push him on back, but now Dark Slayer, TJ, what's the plan? Well, they have the Slayer buff. They should get a high ground. I'd expect this top one to fall. Let's see. Can Indonesia pull from this oh push? Oh, my Lord. Lord, the damage. What the heck was that? That was a Violet with the Slayer buff, especially nice. a late game Violet. We said you need to shut down the Violet. How fast never those towers did. get shredded, TJ. This is now the siege coming in from Vietnam. And it's a Violet. She is able to outrange everybody on Indonesia. Oh, and Wira has to run on back, is able to get on over to the war at the wall, but the minions are keeping up the pressure on top. One of these, one more of these towers should fall. This is just an inevitability at this point. It's oh, he's going to risk his life. The shock comes on down, only finds Polo with the CC. Hissy fit also going to be used for the zone. But look at this, Indonesia, they're slowly falling left and right. Multiple members getting taken on down in Vietnam. Now they can look to open up the door. That's going to be mid lane down. I suspect top lane will fall as well. They might not even need it. They have the wave. This could be game. Minions into the base. You can see the core is ticking on down. And game one to Vietnam. Excellently done by Vietnam to come back in a game. That I want to see if Indonesia actually decides to try and punish Bronze 5 because he was kind of just left to his own. 
and well, majority of the game while you just kept on pushing. Bronze 5 doesn't have as much mobility as he had to work with last game. Uh, on Omen, you can pop the Untouchable, his second ability, and then gets a speed boost and can zoom away. If you're on Kildroth, you have the Sea Spear, that's a short range dash, and nothing else. We're gonna have to see, we're gonna be loading on into game two between Indonesia and Vietnam. Quick reminder, this is a rather important match for both these teams. This is likely going to be the tie-breaking decider on who makes it into the knockout stage. Yeah, either of these teams could make it in that second slot. We don't expect either of them to upset and make it in the first slot. So this is massive for them. It's mandatory. You got to find success here. You got to win this series. Either way, let's go ahead and get into game two of the series between Indonesia and Vietnam. Vietnam. I want to see the aggression from them again. Indonesia only really struggled once they got in their own heads. Let's see, this is going to be a really awkward play. A nice Ooh. stun is going to be there for the disengage, and Indonesia can run away. So I'm looking at the high mobility of the Vietnam composition. I want them to be constantly moving around the map, pressing in and pressuring all sides. And you could already see that's kind of what they're doing. Well, you saw they're looking for the side of Vietnam. They wanted to try and pressure this Rourke early, and they actually don't get the successful invade off. It's something we usually don't see too often. Usually teams fully force the invade to try and steal away the goal. Yeah, neither team fully committing to an invite, but perhaps after last game, both teams feel a little bit burned. They're like, we don't know where everybody was. We kept losing each other. We couldn't see each other on the map, and that that, that was a concern for us. Vietnam, like we we're saying many times, are a naturally more defensive team. I'm not surprised to see them not play aggressive. Indonesia, I'm worried because when they're at their best and most present in this match was when they were playing aggressive. Maybe not as hyper-aggressive as gets them in trouble, but I want to see them confident and pressuring. I want to see if they can get the gold onto this Rourke. Meanwhile, though, toward the river, Karaway has to be a bit careful himself. Blake gets taken down extremely oh low, God, has to use the flicker to get over the wall. That Vietnam, was... they're getting punished for this, for the aggression. That's going to be first blood onto the Rourke. Uh, and this is the downside of playing a ton of very high mobility characters. You see Yamate over on that Malak is going to be the lowest mobility character, particularly in the early game when he doesn't have his shock up. Mm -hmm. Because everyone else is lightweight and moving fast, he just gets left behind. Well, you see TF trying to defend this tower down in bot lane, and that's going to be the kill on top of it. So once again, Indonesia are able to find kills early, TJ. And they're pressing hard for it. This is good. Stay confident. Don't get over aggressive. No double tower dives, please, but keep pressuring, keep finding smart picks and team fights. Maybe apply more pressure down onto Yamate, open up this bot lane to try and get at that Abyssal Dragon. You saw them last game, they were able to get the steal, and then repeatedly pick it up on the respawn and get some gold and experience into their pockets up toward top. Hans has to be a bit careful, but meanwhile, though, on the other side of the map, around that Abyssal Dragon, Hans gonna get taken down underneath oh. tower, but he traps Blake before he dies, so the trade one for one. But look at this, Indonesia, they have the man advantage. They're gonna start up the Abyssal. Yeah, they have the man advantage, and crucially, the map control advantage right now. Only Yamase is in range to potentially steal, and he'd have to hit a really lucky hole. Well, let's go ahead and take another look back onto that first blood, TJ. Yeah, this was a while ago now, but you can see what I was talking about. Yamate, it wasn't necessarily that he was mispositioned, it was that his team left, and he didn't yet have the capacity to join them. Well, you saw in bot lane there, Yamate was forced to use his ultimate, likely trying to dissuade the tower dive coming in from Indonesia. So you can see Vietnam, they're starting to realize, all right, you guys are playing aggressive. Well, we're not going to let you get away with it, so not going to be able to find the kill easily. One of the things Vietnam does have is a ton of CC potential. If they can cycle through stuns and knockups, they can pick up these kills like they fast oh, luck. Oh no, Life Force gonna get taken on down as TF will find the kill. And like that, Vietnam, they're able to find it, but they don't pick off anything else. The Abyssal isn't up, and they got no minions to try and take down that tower. <laughs> and they can't get that jungle. Oh camp. no. <laughs> Ahmed says, hello, that's mine. What are you doing in the jungle, guys? Come on, bud. So I would have liked to see them move more with this. Like, yeah, yes, got the pink bot lane, credit to you, but you cannot just stay there and hope that there's nobody defending it when the next minion wave comes through, because there's going to be somebody defending it. So as a result, they didn't even manage to steal a minor jungle camp. If they had, 
gotten it, I don't think it would have been worth it. Well, you mentioned that Apollo just steals away one with his rocket from the mid lane. So, you know, they're just trading the, the camps. They're like, hey, you can take some, I'll take some. Spirit Sentinel did get taken during this time. Vietnam do manage to get that, and that's nice to see. With this high mobility composition, they're going to constantly be able to maintain pressure across all sides of the map, stay very split. That means that they can get a Spirit Sentinel while also pressuring bot lane. All right, three members down here for oh, Vietnam. How does Indonesia try and respond to this? Because Y-Force is going to get taken down. He tries to take Polo with him. Minion's about to crash into the tower. Let's look up toward the top side. Blake, with just a sliver of health, is able to escape. They do this. This is how they respond. When you see three people bot lane, you know you can push top because they will win even fights provided they have a wide variety of characters. It's literally only lightweight DPS high mobility characters opposing them. If they can bring some supports to bear, some high damage, evade the CC and follow up, they're going to win every single fight on the Indonesia side. But my concern, TJ, is Vietnam, they had three to four members toward the bot side of the map. The Abyssal Dragon was theirs for the take and now they're starting it finally. But Indonesia, they might be able to contest this. The Abyssal though gets burned down, but oh. at what cost? You can see on the side there, Blake was taken down by the Rourke. Meanwhile, up toward top lane. Sure, you got the kill cross trying to cut the wave, but they're not going to get anything else. It's the power of Rourke. If you let him take a sustained fight with you, just sit there and pound in damage. He's going to do exactly that, and it's painful. Well, the Kilgross roaming on over as we take it back over to mid lane. Bronze 5 looking to finally join in on some of these team fights. No one's there to follow up with him, and he's got no more CC. Pressure though from Y Force. He was not satisfied with his earlier engagements. He wants to get more aggressive, and I fear the result will be the same. Oh, he's able to run. No one else from Vietnam coming on I, over. I, uses I, the lasso to go <laughs> in onto the jungle camp. Wants to go toe to toe. He isn't going to get punished, so you know that's why? fine. But look at Hans's damage onto Bronze Five. They're just looking to dive underneath. The Kilgroth though is able to get away. You know why his name is pronounced Y Force? Mm, why would you force that? I don't know why you would force that fight, <laughs> TJ. I don't know. It's a question within itself. Uh, it's, it's the only question you can ask. Spirit Sentinel will be picked up here by the Rourke, but at the same time, there's cross-map pressure. This is what I was talking about with the large movement speed. Y4 still defending this tower, though. It's got a sliver of health. He's able to stay his ground and actually pick up the kill onto nice Yamate. That's a mistake you can't be making. TM doing a good job pressuring forward, but Blake's in trouble oh, in the no, mid lane. Blake. Caught underneath the tower, nowhere to run, and that's going to open up the midsection of the map as Indonesia pick up the first tower. And this was possible because of the pressure in the top lane. They consistently forced defense to come through in the top lane from that Vietnam side, and they didn't, as a result, have people who could get to mid and take the fight. Well, let's take a look back on to the replay in mid lane as they went for that dive and Blake. Watch the mini map. You see right now that Alice and the Rourke are pressuring the top lane and as a result the Kilgroth playing there does not have the movement to get down and be the needed tank with the Malak in the mid lane. Now you've taken the two outer towers up toward the top side of the map at the cost of your bottom tower. White Force still hanging on. He wanted to protect that tower until his dying breath and Vietnam will fulfill that promise. Lots of dying breaths happening. Yeah, he's uh, he's not been having a great time, Devin. Two, three, and one. He's been pressured a lot, and that's what we were kind of expecting. You know, they're not really pressuring Bronze 5 like we saw in game one, and that costed them another tower. It should be noted, though, this Wonder Woman is doing remarkably well given his current situation. Apollo, he's stuck, but they're able to burn down that omen. Look at this, Vietnam, they have the minion wave on top of this. They also have the pressure in the top side of the map. Still, though, the Wonder Woman is able to get back underneath the tower and actually pick up the kill on Polo. Bronze 5 maybe overstayed his welcome. In Indonesia, they're going to be given two free kills, but at what cost can Vietnam answer back? Some mid lane pressure during this time. Blake might be able to take it down. I'd really just like him to back off, though. See, they're able to rotate on over, so still with two members falling. Vietnam, they're not able to pick up that mid lane tower, but up toward the top side, the pressure is everywhere. Hypothetically, Indonesia has a better late game composition. If they can last that long, they should be able to bring to bear the fact that they have that Alice combo with the Liliana, they have the Wonder Woman, they have the Roar, and really look great. I just don't know if they can last that long with the current pace of Vietnamese play. And one for me, TJ, is we talk about Bolo. This time around, he's on the Joker. He's mainly there uh -huh. for poke, for the assassination. He doesn't have the CC. He doesn't have the pick potential we usually see with the other picks he's often playing. 
Yeah, and I'm not sure how I feel about that, but it is working. And it is, in fact, working very, very well as Polo has been a part of three of his team's kills so far. That's half of them. So, able to, but they lose out on that pressure, lose the Abyssal Dragon. In Indonesia, they pick themselves up a thousand gold lead and look into pressure up toward the top side, really trying to play around this Dark Slayer. I talked about the pace of the enemy's play earlier. It slowed right down. This is what we talked about. Maybe a little bit too defensive at times. Bronze looks to disagree. Yeah, he's the only one that's really exerting the pressure in one of these lanes in Indonesia. They're going to try and come on down. Run. Stun, Sliver. not going <laughs> to land. He escapes Vietnam. They now have an open lane in mid. Can they take down this tower? So he pops his ultimate Gore Lord specifically to avoid the CC. Here's problems in mid, though. DF, he's caught out to the side, and Ahmed is going to go ultimate. 3-0-1 on the Liliana. One of our players to watch and is performing beautifully in this game, too. The Kilgroth ultimate Gore Lord actually gives himself CC immunity, meaning he cannot be stunned while it's active. That allows him to get, to, to get away. I don't know if it's worth it, though, because that's a Dark Slayer being taken. My force going down extremely oh, low. Oh, the attack. Up comes on through. Indonesia will be able to secure the Dark Slayer, but they lose a high ground tower. That's not worth it, I don't think. But can they collapse? Can they pick off multiple members of Hurl Caraway? Be the one to fall. Bronze doesn't He's even care pushing. about the fight. He's just shredding towers Why? left and right. Why does he get that tower? He's staying in this fight. He's going to fall, though, unfortunately. DJ Polo will fall alongside with him, but that is a lot of object objectives taking being taken off the map by Vietnam. That is absolutely not worth it. They're not going to get anything with this Slayer buff, maybe one or two towers at most, because they had to spend the entire time with that first bit of the Slayer buff playing defense, playing catch-up as Vietnam tore through their towers. You can see, though, they are forcing this. They say this mid lane tower is ours. It's going to fall. They're able to pick up the third one of the game. Meanwhile, in bot lane, there's also the tower being taken by Ahmed. Look at this, though. Vietnam, they want to try and force a fight in the mid lane. Caraway, a little bit low himself, but he has the safety of his teammates around him. But Blake they kind of let him to go to the pasture as Yamate look to chase Blake. him. They're able to. <laughs> Blake, how the heck is Blake still alive during the all this? The entire team chased him, and he just ran away. And then Vietnam went, oh, OK, we can just defend. Is that hey, all right? It's enough to work, but meanwhile, three towers in the last minute were taken by Indonesia. That gives them so <laughs> much pressure back toward the map, but they can't get caught out because look at the damage coming on down, but Polo will get eviscerated I don't by the Liliana. I don't think it's that bad because you can see the Slayer buffs just ended. Nothing major was gained with it. Yamate tries to jump on in himself. He will fall in Vietnam. They're just throwing bodies at Indonesia. They're able to pick up these kills. They can't keep giving these away. TF is trapped up toward the top lane. Hans wants to try and go for the kill, but he can't finish him off. Vietnam may be properly in trouble now because Indonesia have managed to completely equalize the lead. They're about to get another kill onto Bronze. Oh, Bronze, he tried to finish off the kill, but he will fall in Indonesia. This is exactly what they need. They need to win this game two to force the game three and likely That's keep their towers. knockout stage alive. That's a lead to Indonesia, arguably, and they're going for the game. Gonna use the bracelets to go for the disengage. Cannot find the kill, but look at Polo. The Ooh. damage coming out from this Liliana. Second high ground tower is gonna fall in top lane. This is what I was talking about with the late game composition. The capacity to do a little bit of extra damage in the late game, as well as have all of that HP on characters like that Wonder Woman is making all the difference. As when we get to the late game, the lightweight Vietnam composition just simply cannot take straight up fights. Back and forth, TJ. A way to start out Group B. They're very close to finishing off that top side tower. They actually were not able to complete it. It just takes one wave to come on through. Let's take another look at some of the action. Yeah, this is the mid lane taken out first. You can actually see Polo here. He's about to get wrecked. And this is just an example if you're wondering, what does having low HP against a team that can do infinite damage do to you? Ooh. That. Hello, Liliana. Hello. How you doing? <laughs> he gets chunked out there, and that's not... Not the position Polo needs to be, because you know what? He's there for poke. He's not there for the sustained damage. And if he gets taken on down, he has to get all the way back to his base. Meanwhile, Abyssal Dragon was taken once again by Indonesia, taking that one off the map. But the question now becomes, it seems like we're slowing down, TJ. Is it just going to be another waiting game for a Dark Slayer? No, I don't think so at all. Indonesia are an aggressive team, and they're going to keep pushing. Yamate able to get out of there with the shock, but he won't have that available if a fight were to break out within a couple moments. But it looks like Indonesia not going to play aggressive. 
They're going to keep pushing, though. They may not play fully aggressive, but they're going to keep these minion waves going. Vietnam needs to do what Bronze 5 is doing. Have the pressure, have the wave clear so that you can choose where you can defend, where you might defend, because it sure as hell isn't that top like tower. High ground falls. That's two of them off the board. There's only one tower remaining in the base, and then the core is exposed. This is not the situation you want to be in on the side of Vietnam. Damage coming on through, also on toward the side here. Ahmed, we talked about this player, sitting 5-0-3, putting on a stellar performance. The rest of the team on top of that, too. The Rourke is 5-0-5. This is a very scary situation to be in. The Hissy Fit comes on down, zones away the team Ups. from the rest. The Shock going to come on back. This is going to be the final fight for Vietnam. If they're able to keep their hopes alive, they're able to take down the Omen. Yamate just jumps on in, and Indonesia can just bring this one all the way back into the base as they take down two members. Bronze 5 falls. That was a mad overextension from Vietnam, but they still survived oh, the no, fight, Ahmed. and that might be enough. He gets executed on down by TF and now Vietnam looking to run it on back. Three members fall of Indonesia, and we're still in game two at 15 and a half minutes. That might have just been enough. All Vietnam needed was a reprieve, and the Dark Slayer up is, um, is up in a minute. There will be about 30 seconds DJ. on the respawns. That means they're going to be still getting to this map. DJ, look at the top lane. The minion wave is starting to form. Oh, no. Yamate is sure tr going to try and soak up that It'll wave. Take a bit. Take a little bit. Unfortunately, though, no one's going to go for it. I haven't noticed yet. I think maybe that's there, okay. Yamate's finally back okay. up. He's like, all right, all right. And Bronze 5 is back. <laughs> so they, they got a little bit worried. I was like, are we going to see a back door for game two? This is not what I wanted to see. Abyssal Dragon going to be taken once again here as Vietnam will secure it. And that, I think, is highlighting the problem, basically, for Vietnam. Yes, you still have control, but unfortunately, you're down to just one tower. That means there's constantly going to be pressure in your base and there is nothing you can do about it except manage it as best you can. And that was another thing we talked about during the drafts is that map awareness. Yeah. Is it often costs them so much? It usually is the reason they lose out during these games. Let's take a look though toward that bot lane is Y Force gonna go toe to toe with Bronze 5. Bronze 5 doesn't even want to deal with this Wonder Woman. You can see he's running all over the place on the mini map while the rest of the team is looking to position around the Dark Slayer. Looking around the Dark Slayer, that means that bot lane fight very should decide quite a bit more than the fight in and of itself. How Vietnam takes this Dark Slayer fight will decide their fight. You can see multiple members of Indonesia still staying up, but look toward the bot side of the map. Bronze 5 and Polo are going to go for Y Force. If they're able to take down this Wonder Woman, Mike. that might be enough. Three members down here. Can Indonesia find anything? That is a major pick to find. Indonesia could properly respond by just committing to the top lane because they saw three and bot, but oh, instead no. they're recalling and they're scattering, and that oh, is man, not he going can't well. Go on down and Polo will find the kill. Not what you want. Multiple members falling left and right. They are falling to pieces, TJ. That is not what you want to do. When you have pressure at the bottom side of the map, you should not then split up, scatter, and get picked off one by one. And TF, he's going for the 2v1 underneath the towers, down toward the core. Polo trying to kite on back, but look toward the this top lane. That's going to be game Vietnam. If they can finish off the core, that's all it will take and likely lock themselves into the knockout stage, depending on the results. That is devastating for Indonesia.